I'm Tom Hanks, and it's so good to be hosting SNL for the ninth time. Huh? Oh, wow! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most notable celebrities of this century who brought just the right blend of charm, humor, and star quality to their hosting gigs on SNL, ultimately achieving remarkable success. I loved working with you on date night. Oh no, that, that was Steve Carell. It was? Number 30, Nate Bargatze. Some celebrities need a few appearances to find their groove hosting SNL, but for Nate Bargatze, it was magic at first try. Look, if you're at home, I'm as shocked as you are that I'm here. So The Tennessee-born comedian made his hosting debut during the 49th season and seemed right at home from the get-go. His opening monologue, brimming with his signature wry humor, set the perfect tone for the evening. However, the highlight of the night was undoubtedly Bargetsy as George Washington, reminding his soldiers of the true purpose of the war, the freedom to choose their own system of weights and measurements. Yes, I dream of that one day. Our proud nation will measure weights in pounds, and that 2,000 pounds shall be called a ton. <laughs> and what would 1,000 pounds be called, sir? Nothing. <laughs> was equally brilliant in subsequent sketches, portraying a small-town serial killer and a country band singer. If we didn't know any better, we'd think Bargatze was already a five-timer. Number 29, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Is there anything Phoebe Waller-Bridge cannot do? We highly doubt it. The Emmy-winning actress, writer, and producer showcased her comedy chops in a 2019 episode, proving that she was more than just her Fleabag character. I'm from the UK, which means I find everything embarrassing. And uh, this monologue is probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. <laughs> like a great host should, Waller Bridge took center stage in various sketches, delivering a mishmash of accents in the Love Island spoof and embodying the wife character in the recurring War in Words segment. William. I think your father died of a broken heart. He just couldn't bear to go on without your mother. <laughs> Love, Lydia. My mother passed as well! Perhaps the standout of the night was Midday News, in which Waller Bridge played a local newscaster drawn into a race-based competition against her colleagues. Despite her charm and comedic might, Waller Bridge never overpowers the cast. Instead, she seamlessly blends in, affirming her status as one of Hollywood's most in-demand talents. No way! That doesn't count. Hurricanes aren't white. Well, unless they name Chet. Right. Number 28, Natalie Portman. It's always interesting to see how dramatic actors fare on SNL. Judging from her two stints so far this century, it is a walk in the park for Natalie Portman. <laughs> Yeah, in episode three, when Obi-Wan is sent to Kashyyyk to find uh, General Grievous. Uh, that's weird, because I don't remember Obi-Wan being sent to Kashyyyk to find General Grievous. I remember him being sent to Utapau. <laughs> the Oscar winner first graced the stage in 2006, following the Star Wars prequel trilogy. True to form, Portman commits to every sketch she's in, delivering the iconic Natalie rap song to hilarious effect. Leave you screaming! Pay for my dry cleaning! She returned 12 years later, this time upping the ante for a sequel rap that achieved the impossible task of outshining the original song. Beyond the raps, Portman resurrects her award-winning role as Jackie Kennedy and delivers laughs opposite SNL veterans like Tina Fey and Rachel Dratch in the Revolutionary War sketch. We eagerly await her third showing. Philadelphia, please, you got no chance, kid! Yeah, let New England handle this, you skis! Number 27, Chance the Rapper. After appearing as a musical guest in 2015, Chance the Rapper was brought on to host an episode two years later. And in the spirit of giving, I've pledged to give $1 million to Chicago Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. The only problem is, I talked to my accountant and I do not have it. Um... Despite his lack of acting or comedy experience, Chance sinks his teeth into the material and runs away with it. He lends his musical chops to the comeback Barack sketch and delivers a hilarious performance as the fictional illegitimate son of Steve Harvey. Well, hey there, Cecil. Wow, you sure have grown since I last saw you. Yeah, it, it's been a minute. <laughs> In 2019, Chance made yet another return to the Studio 8H stage, this time serving double duty as host and musical guest. 
Although not as impressive as his first showing, the rapper more than pulls his weight, resurrecting the sports announcer character from his previous appearance and debuting the evergreen Judge Barry. Let's keep this thing moving. Next case. The plaintiff. <laughs> guilty. He's guilty. But I'm the plaintiff. Plaintiff, defendant, I don't care. I just know that you're guilty. Number 26, Eddie Murphy. It's no news that Eddie Murphy helped revitalize Saturday Night Live when he joined the show in 1980. Remarkably, he hosted an episode while still part of the cast. After a second hosting stint in 1984, Murphy stayed away from the show for more than three decades until his triumphant return in 2019. But if you had told me 30 years ago that I would be this boring, stay-at-home, you know, house dad and Bill Cosby would be in jail. <laughs> Even I would have took that bet. <laughs> Fans rejoiced as Murphy revived beloved characters such as Buckwheat, Gumby, and Mr. Robinson. While these appearances tapped into nostalgia, they also brought fresh perspectives by reimagining them in modern day situations. Can you believe the nerve of them boys and girls? There's a special word for that. Additionally, Murphy introduced new characters and participated in the iconic Black Jeopardy segment. While his SNL legacy was already solidified, this appearance only proved that despite his lengthy absence, Studio 8H will always remain Eddie Murphy's home. This is the thanks that I get for saving the show? Shame on you, Lord Michaels! Shame on you, NBC! Shame on you! Number 25, Pedro Pascal. 2023 was a great year for Petro Pascal. The other day, a guy stopped me on the street and said, my son loves the Mandalorian. And the next thing I know, I'm FaceTiming with a six-year-old who has no idea who I am because my character wears a mask for the entire show. <laughs> he not only reprised his leading role in The Mandalorian, but also gained widespread acclaim for his performance in HBO's The Last of Us. Hot on the heels of that show's premiere, Pascal made his debut on the SNL stage, hosting the 12th episode of season 48. Pascal gives his all to the sketches, elevating moderately funny material to uproarious heights. I'm sorry, I, I want to be a cool teacher. I know I'm your bias and that I always munch on it. His versatility shines through as the writers throw him into various characters, from an irresistible teacher to a highly critical mother to a flirty waiter. And he excels in each one. I actually am beautiful. Everyone is beautiful. And you most of all, because it's the kind that's on the inside. <laughs> Even the Mario Kart sketch wouldn't be the same without him. If Pascal hadn't considered full-time comedy acting before, he definitely should now. Let's -a go. <laughs> Number 24, Betty White. It's quite shocking that Betty White didn't host SNL more than once. When I first heard about the campaign to get me to host Saturday Night Live, I didn't know what Facebook was. <laughs> and now that I do know what it is, I have to say, it sounds like a huge waste of time. <laughs> she was a celebrated actress and comedian, best known for her role in the beloved sitcom The Golden Girls. In 2010, fans launched a successful online campaign to have the then 88-year-old White host an episode of SNL, making her the oldest person to do so. Unlike most episodes, this one was exceptional from beginning to end. Well, ladies, as I used to say to my loving husband, Irving, of 55 years, what are you waiting for, stupid? Eat it! <laughs> White pushed herself to excel in every sketch, drawing huge laughs as the convict Grandma Loretta and winning hearts with her cat lady in the Census Taker sketch. Uh, what is your last name, ma'am? Blarfengar. <laughs> Can you spell that for me? S-M-I-T. <laughs> it's no surprise that she won an Emmy for this episode, but more importantly, she created lasting memories for us all to cherish. Number 23, John Hamm. John Hamm rose to fame playing the lead role in the intense period drama Mad Men. In 2008, he stunned audiences with his comedic prowess when he hosted an episode of SNL. When I talk to people about Mad Men, they always ask me the same questions. Um, what is Mad Men? <laughs> is that a television show? Hamm's incredible comedic timing and his willingness to poke fun at himself and his iconic character made the episode one of the season's highlights. Such was the acclaim that Ham returned to host twice in 2010. During these appearances, the actor did less of the obligatory Mad Men spoofs, 
instead lending his comedic skills to silly premises and delivering brilliant impressions of JFK and Robin Williams. Marty, it's getting heavy in here. Oh, yes. Oh, 1.21 gigawatts. Yo, Marty, Libyans, we gotta get the hell out of here. There's no doubt that just like Don Draper, Ham can market anything. And with his SNL hosting stints, we're completely sold. And unlike other bathroom ham dispensers, John Ham's John Ham has only the finest boar's head oven roasted ham. Mmm, <laughs> that's good ham. <laughs> Number 22, Donald Glover. Would it surprise you to know that Donald Glover auditioned for SNL twice but was rejected? That's not a joke, I'm just still pissed. <laughs> Well, judging by his hosting performance, the show clearly missed out on an exceptional talent. In the episode, Glover brings his extensive comedy background to the forefront. He boasts of his remarkable resume in his monologue and proceeds to demonstrate all of those talents in the subsequent sketches. Uh, I, I can't read it. It's covered in my friend Scott's blood. Well, then move your friend Scott's blood around <laughs> with your finger until you can read it. Whether he's playing a lawyer for Jurassic World or a troubled intern at Mattel, Glover takes charge of each sketch, delivering one hit after another. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Bobby. But you knew that, you have caller ID. I'm so stupid, goodbye. <laughs> he also displayed his prowess on the mic, serving as musical guest with his alter ego, Childish Gambino, and giving us not just one, but two music video parodies. I love you, girl. Number 21, Jim Carrey. Speaking of exceptional performers who were turned down by SNL, Jim Carrey auditioned three times but was rejected at every turn. Who thinks 2011 will be the best year ever? <laughs> who thought 2010 was total crap? Despite the setback, he forged a successful film career and returned to host SNL twice in the 2010s. Carrie seamlessly integrates with the cast, while still commanding attention as host. Why aren't they going away? <laughs> Did you see him wink at me? <laughs> Known for his incomparable impressions, Carrie's turn as Matthew McConaughey is eerily accurate, as is his portrayal of a ballerina in the Black Swan spoof. <laughs> But the only thing better than one Carrie is the entire Carrie family turning up for a reunion. With such great showings as host, one can only imagine the comedic brilliance Carrie would have brought as a cast member. <laughs> Number 20, Zach Galifianakis. It's, uh, it's great to be back hosting Saturday Night Live. <laughs> oh, what's that? I've never hosted. <laughs> Galifianakis auditioned to become an SNL cast member in 1999. While he didn't make the cut, Galifianakis did land a gig as an SNL writer, which lasted for only two weeks. About a decade after his brief SNL stint, Galifianakis hit the big time with his scene-stealing work in The Hangover. Now in high demand, Galifianakis returned to host SNL three times, earning an Emmy nomination in the process. As a host, Galifianakis' signature offbeat awkwardness is on full display, especially during his monologues. I went to my high school reunion not too long ago, and uh, it was very weird because I was homeschooled. <laughs> SNL has also given Galifianakis a chance to show off his musical talents, playing the piano and channeling his inner little orphan Annie. Also, few hosts have donned a wider wardrobe of ridiculous costumes, from a dragon to an M&M. You were certainly the recipient of some of my low moments in that three-hour shift. Number 19, Ryan Gosling. I mean, I haven't felt this excited since I saved jazz. While best known for his dramatic roles, Ryan Gosling has showcased strong comedic chops in Lars and the Real Girl, The Nice Guys, and his two times hosting SNL. As if he wasn't versatile enough, Gosling is also a gifted singer and musician, even if he didn't save jazz. During his SNL appearances, Gosling has played a man obsessed with papyrus font and an adult who still firmly believes in Santa Claus. Do you think that me and my baby aren't good enough to meet Santa? No. Santa? Is that what you think? As silly as all that sounds, what makes these sketches so funny is how seriously and intensely Gosling approaches the roles. 
Although Gosling frequently plays cool, straight-faced characters, he couldn't help but crack up during the infamous Close Encounter sketch. Of course, if anyone can make character breaking look cool, it's Gosling. I was crying. I was carried down gently in a cradle of light placed into a soft bed of wildflowers. <laughs> yeah. Number 18, Emma Stone. I just want to say to all the 14-year-old girls out there, drop out of school and move to LA because it always works out. From one La La Land star to another, Emma Stone is married to SNL segment director Dave McCary. But before they tied the knot in 2020, the Oscar-winning actress hosted four times over the course of 10 years. The SNL writers have drawn inspiration from the movies that made Stone a star, including Superbad and The Amazing Spider-Man. I think it might be a little late to get the part of Spider-Man, though. It's never too late for Spider-Man. They've also taken full advantage of Stone's musical background in sketches like I Broke My Arm and The Christmas Candle. The one true candle, the candle we all get and give away. In a sketch called The Actress, Stone plays a struggling performer who takes a bit part in an adult film. And she is determined to bring depth to her character. Likewise, Stone always goes above and beyond on SNL, no matter who she's playing. Jared. I forgive you. Number 17, Paul Rudd. But tonight, finally. It's the Paul Rudd Show. The world knows him as Ant-Man, but on SNL, Paul Rudd's most memorable character is Austin Vogelcheck. Although Austin seems like an average Joe, his family can get a little too close for comfort. As uncomfortable as the kissing family sketches can get, Rudd remains his usual charming, composed self throughout. Rudd's other personalities include a loudmouthed pizza boy, an avid Showtime subscriber, and multiple characters in White Christmas. Rudd even reunited with his Anchorman news team in 2013. Will Ferrell, Dave Koechner, and Steve Carell joined Rudd, as well as One Direction, for a rendition of Afternoon Delight. Afternoon Delight, now we are Nine Direction. Ferrell and Koechner would stick around to grab a drink with Rudd, Taryn Killam, and Kenan Thompson at Chuck E. Cheese. Brasty's colonoscopy tape got higher ratings than How I Met Your Mother. Number 16, John Mulaney. To be hosting here is just surreal. I mean, I used, to, I used to write monologues for the host. Now I'm up here, I get to give the monologue. Although he was never a cast member, John Mulaney served as a writer on SNL for four years. During that time, he made many contributions to Weekend Update, most notably co-creating Stefan with Bill Hader. Since leaving SNL, Mulaney has returned to host four times, scoring a Guest Acting Emmy nomination in 2019. Mulaney typically kicks things off with his stand-up, as that is his area of expertise. So this gazebo was built by the town in 1863. That's in the middle of the Civil War. <laughs> and they built a gazebo. <laughs> When he hosted for the first time in 2018, Mulaney was given the opportunity to dig up an old sketch that had been rejected during his days on the writing staff, Diner Lobster. The bizarre musical sketch became an unlikely fan favorite, inspiring more Broadway parodies that would take Mulaney to a bodega bathroom, the airport, and a souvenir shop fitting room. Sure, we have a fitting room. Hey, Times Square Minion! <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, Will Ferrell. Why? Why would I say that in front of Ryan Reynolds? You would never mess up like that, would you? Can you just pretend I'm not here? <laughs> no way. It's too late. I'm locked in. For seven years, Will Ferrell was arguably the MVP on SNL, breathing new life into the struggling sketch series. Ferrell was missed when he left in 2002, but he'd go on to join the Five Timers Club. Ferrell brings his trademark over-the-top energy to every monologue, whether he's paying tribute to mothers, showing off his dramatic side, or getting starstruck by Ryan Reynolds. Unfortunately, Ferrell forgot all about his tenure at SNL following a head injury. Just now, while I was doing my quick change back there, I, I hit my head on a steel beam so hard, <laughs> I heard a crack, and then a whoosh of wind. And after that, I, I can't remember a thing. It'll take more than a steel beam, however, to make us forget about Farrell's most memorable SNL moments. Hosting has allowed Farrell to revisit some of his best impressions. He returned to Celebrity Jeopardy as Alex Trebek, and in 2018, addressed the nation again as George W. Bush. A lot of people are saying, man, I wish George W. Bush was still our president right about now. <laughs> so I just wanted to address my fellow Americans tonight and remind you guys that I was really bad. Number 14, 
Kristen Wiig. This is Butternut. Mm. Butternut is a master of psychological manipulation. Throughout her seven years as a cast member, Kristen Wiig racked up four Emmy nominations. Wiig would later add two more nominations to her resume for hosting SNL. Wiig's hosting appearances are not only hilarious, but educational as well. Who knew that Ben Franklin and Vikings were at the first Thanksgiving? That same episode saw the return of Sue the Surprise Lady, whose excitement for a Thanksgiving reunion cannot be contained. It's a surprise! And there's a plan? She doesn't know it? Wig notably hosted the finale of Saturday Night Live at Home, which aired during the pandemic. With her monologue, Wig brought her unmatched eccentricity while also working in a few sincere words. I don't know if I truly appreciated my mom the first 45 years of my life, but this year I'm feeling especially grateful. Her screen time that night wasn't limited to the opening, as Wig gave some helpful hair tips to everyone else in quarantine. Number 13, Bill Hader. Whoa, I am so nervous. <laughs> It is not a joke, I am so nervous. Alongside Wig, Bill Hader joined SNL in 2005 and quickly established himself as a comedic force. He received two Emmy nominations as a cast member and two more when he came back to host. The first time, Hader got to fulfill his dream of singing on SNL with some backup from Wig and Harvey Firestein. So let's go, cause it's Saturday, oh yeah, it's Saturday. The second time around, he resurrected a few classic characters. Hader was so eager to get back onto the Californian set that he changed into his Devon outfit mid-monologue. Stefan returned to Weekend Update and, once again, Hader had a hard time concealing his laughter. Hader's knack for celebrity impersonations was put to effective use as well, inserting Alan Alda, Al Pacino, and Clint Eastwood into Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Number 12, Melissa McCarthy. Never in my wildest dreams that I ever expect to host a show five times. Five whole times. Melissa McCarthy has appeared on SNL so many times that it's easy to forget that she was never a regular. She's hosted five times and has repeatedly popped up as former White House press secretary Sean Spicer. That's right, Spicy's back, Sarah's out. <laughs> Do this. Every time she's hosted, McCarthy has been nominated for a Guest Acting Emmy, winning once in 2017. It was McCarthy's iconic turn as Spicer that arguably got her the gold, but that's far from her only memorable contribution. As is the case with her film roles, McCarthy throws herself into every sketch, sometimes quite literally. Her powerful line delivery, physical comedy expertise, and willingness to go all out make McCarthy a natural fit for the SNL stage. Our only complaint is that Supermarket Spree was cut for time. Boy, Paget now taking Melanie's personal items for herself. What are you doing? Paget showing no mercy. Number 11, John Goodman. This is my 13th time hosting. Like McCarthy, John Goodman could be mistaken for an official SNL player. Despite an unsuccessful audition to join the cast, Goodman went on to host 13 times and portrayed Linda Tripp throughout the Clinton Lewinsky scandal. So far this century, Goodman's hosted three times. In Goodman's 2000 monologue, he addressed his struggles with alcoholism as well as his absence from the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. I'm gonna stop drinking right after tonight's show. I'm going on the wagon. I promise you, brothers. Good, man, we're proud right. of you, Jack. Goodman hosted again in 2001, doing a spot-on Wilford Brimley impression, but took a hiatus of 12 years after that. Goodman delivered with his long-awaited homecoming, sharing a duet with Keenan, sharing a mouthful with Kate McKinnon, and sharing the stage with a few fellow snowflakes. He also brought the laughs as Drunker Uncle, although Goodman's been sober since 2007. That's right, I got one more drink and 30 more nephews. <laughs> Number 10, Steve Martin. As I, as I stand on this stage, all I can think of is all the great people who have stood on this exact spot and I think germs. Steve Martin might very well be the best host in SNL history. While Martin has hosted 16 times overall, only three of those episodes aired in the past 20 years, hence why he's not even higher on this list. With these appearances, however, Martin reminded audiences why he's one of the all-time greats. Alec Baldwin is hosting SNL tonight and he's going to tie your record. In 2006, Martin opened the show by defending his title from Alec Baldwin. Despite getting thrown out a window, Baldwin would eventually surpass Martin's record for most times hosting SNL. 
Maybe Martin would have hosted more times if Lorne Michaels had given him more money. When it comes to class, sarcasm, and timing, though, Martin will always be hard to top, even when he's sharing the hosting gig with his pal Martin Short. Our show is like Steve at the urinal. It streams for 32 minutes. <laughs> Number nine, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Some people say that Hollywood has made me rather soft, but these silly accusations make me rather cry. The Rock is one of the biggest movie stars on the planet, but back in 2000, he was primarily known as a professional wrestler. Hosting SNL for the first time, Johnson demonstrated that he had real acting and comedic potential, which only became more apparent in the years to come. In between headlining numerous blockbusters, Johnson found the time to join the Five Timers Club. Over the years, his self-aware macho persona has been impeccably utilized in sketches like the gritty Bambi remake. A Bambi. Speaking of fake movies we desperately want to see, when is The Rock going to star in Gosford Park 2 already? SNL has also provided a platform for one of Johnson's best characters, The Rock Obama. Could that be foreshadowing the Rock administration? Now, uh, no be alarmed. <laughs> the Rock Obama, much like uh, Barack Obama, only stronger and uh, more impulsive. Number eight, Adam Driver. But people think that I hate red carpet stuff. And I do, but it's just because I'm bad at smiling. We all associate SNL with quality comedy, but Adam Driver proves that it can also be a great showcase for acting. Take Career Day, for example. If you didn't already know that Driver was hosting, you probably wouldn't recognize him under that decrepit makeup, devious voice, and domineering demeanor. Feel this boy. <laughs> Understand the pain. You think I was always the picture of strength that I am now? Driver is just that talented of an actor. Whereas a lot of SNL hosts essentially play themselves in every sketch, Driver has transformed himself into a frustrated science professor, a Southern cheerleader coach, and a Medieval Times restaurant actor who takes his role a little too seriously. Of course, Kylo Ren is the most famous character in Driver's filmography, and he helped make undercover boss Starkiller Base one of the best Star Wars parodies ever. This means something to me now. Number seven, Dave Chappelle. I know it's been a long time. It's been a long time, so, so please be patient. Following a lengthy absence from the mainstream comedy scene, Dave Chappelle staged a comeback that culminated with an Emmy-winning SNL guest spot. Aside from bringing back several Chappelle Show characters, the episode was notable for airing the Saturday after Donald Trump won the 2016 U.S. presidential election. At an especially uncertain time, Chappelle made audiences laugh and think with his poignant monologue. Why do we have to say that Black Lives Matter? Now, I admit that is not the best slogan, but McDonald's already took You Deserve a Break Today. The election night sketch featuring Chappelle and Chris Rock also perfectly captured the moment. Chappelle returned four years later on the same Saturday that many outlets officially declared that Joe Biden had defeated Trump in the 2020 election. In addition to politics, Chappelle provided clever commentary on COVID-19, race relations, and the state of America, again, giving us exactly what we needed. Remember when I was here four years ago, Remember how bad that felt? Remember that half the country right now still feels that way. Please remember that. Number six, Drew Barrymore. And tonight, which is my sixth show, which means I've hosted more than any other woman in Saturday Night Live's history. <laughs> Barrymore hosted in 1982 at the ripe age of seven, and again in 1999 during her 20s. She's hosted on four additional occasions this century, bringing her total to six. Becoming the second woman to host five times, Barry Moore has more than left her mark on SNL. If that's not enough evidence, look no further than her priceless impressions of Sharon Osbourne. Things started to happen in my yard. I would come home and the bushes would be shorter. And fellow child star Abigail Breslin. As a side note, Barry Moore approves of Chloe Fineman's spot on impression of her. Outside of celebrity impersonations, Barry Moore's vocal talents have given us original characters like Barbara Hernandez. Is that the professors Virginia and Roger Clavin? Oh, oh what, what a, a surprise. surprise! It's our dear friend, Barbara Hernandez! Yes. Gilly has also met her Italian equal in Barry Moore's Gilly. This actress has come a long way since E.T., and apparently Star Wars and Poltergeist. Number five, 
Christopher Walken. In the movies, I never get a chance to do things like this, sing, dance, do crazy make em ups Few hosts have given us a wider array of memorable SNL characters than Christopher Walken. There are recurring characters like The Continental, who we like to watch with a nice glass of champagne. Even characters who only appeared in one sketch have achieved legendary status. Walken's Bruce Dickinson delivered what might be the most quotable line in SNL history. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Then there's Colonel Angus, who's infamous for, well, his name speaks for itself. What makes Walken such a fun host is his unusual delivery, spinning the most basic lines into comedic gold. He's the kind of actor who can mess up on live television and still get a huge laugh. Several SNL members can do a good Walken impression, but nothing beats the real deal. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Number four, Justin Timberlake. Gonna make myself comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> This is awkward. After Justin Timberlake went solo, a lot of critics had a hard time getting past his boy band days. For many, it was Timberlake's appearances on SNL that finally won them over. On his way into the Five Timers Club, Timberlake proved he can not only sing, but deliver the laughs as well. The charismatic performer has developed a few unforgettable characters, such as the dancing mascot and Peg from Target. Of course, it's Timberlake's collaboration with Andy Samberg that solidified his status as an SNL star. What started as a song about a naughty Christmas present inspired a trilogy about motherly love and the golden rule of three. Timberlake's won four Emmys for his work on SNL, two of which were for guest acting. I'm not gonna sing tonight. Number three, Tina Fey. I couldn't do any of this without my beloved husband who for this performance only will be played by New York Jets quarterback Mark Sanchez. Shortly after becoming the show's first female head writer, Tina Fey started getting in front of the camera as an SNL regular. So when Fey returned to host in 2008, it was as if she had never left. Still, that didn't stop Steve Martin from giving her a few pointers. While Fey was best known for Weekend Update during her years as a cast member, hosting has given her the chance to really cut loose. She's played a teacher infatuated with Justin Bieber and a would-be Mean Girls cast member. Tina Fey starring in the Mean Girls musical is going to be fetch. <laughs> and that is not going to happen. Fey's sporadic cameos as Sarah Palin have only added to her SNL legacy. There's only one thing better than Fey hosting alone. Fey hosting with her old Weekend Update co-anchor Amy Poehler. Sorry, we've been together for the past two months nonstop. We're at the point where we're finishing each other's centipedes. Human, human centipedes. centipedes. <laughs> Number two, Alec Baldwin. Thank you, Christian Bale. <laughs> well, who has replaced me as the person most synonymous with recorded celebrity meltdown. As of 2024, nobody has hosted SNL more times than Alec Baldwin who's taken center stage on 17 occasions. A lot of people make a big deal about the record. I don't really care about that. It's not a competition. Because if it was, I've won. Baldwin shattered the record this century, and not even Steve Martin could stop him. He commemorated his 17th time with a trip down memory lane. And while Baldwin got visibly older since 1990, this actor ages like a fine wine. It's hard to top Peach Sweaty, but Baldwin has played plenty of memorable SNL characters these past two decades. He's gotten close with a couple of lovers, put a Christmas twist on his Glen Gary Glen Ross character, and rocked out as the fourth Jonas brother. Even if you ignored all the episodes Baldwin hosted, his Emmy-winning turn as Donald Trump would still secure his SNL legacy. Macho, macho man. I've got to be a macho man. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Tom Hanks. You know, um, magazine cover recently called me America's dad. <laughs> and I would have preferred sexiest man alive, but I will take it. This Oscar winner has hosted 10 times, and while only three of those episodes debuted this century, they contained many of his best bits. Some of them even rank up there with the funniest SNL sketches of the past 20 years. 
The one that immediately comes to mind is Haunted Elevator, which introduced the world to a new Halloween icon in David S. Pumpkins. Any questions? Hanks shined once again as an unlikely contestant on Black Jeopardy. Hanks was also the first host of SNL at home, a fitting choice since he was one of the first household names to be diagnosed with COVID-19. It was comforting to see America's dad recovered and ready to make the world laugh during such a difficult time. We are doing everything we can to make this feel like the SNL you know and love. I am even using cue cards, see? I am even using cue cards. What other celebrities would you love to see host the iconic sketch program? Let us know in the comments below. I'm a child of Abraham, and I'm born of my witness. I do not give my consent to be hypnotized. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.